What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode we're gonna be talking about increasing your hourly rates as a freelance web designer and web developer. You probably wish you could increase your hourly rate and bring home a little extra income on that project that you're doing. Of course you do. Everybody wants to do really, really good work and get paid well for that work. But sometimes the circumstances don't allow for a perfect situation. The timeline is short, the client is needy, the budget is slim. What do you do in those situations? Just send the client and the project packing just because it doesn't fit your perfect requirements? Or maybe this is the time where you start getting a little bit creative, a little bit resourceful, and figuring out a way to actually make more off the project. So today I'm gonna to share with you my most useful tips on increasing your hourly rate, as well as a tool I just got done using to deliver a project and 10X my hourly rate. That's coming up next. When you really get down to it, there's only two answers to the question of how to increase your rates. Number one, you just increase your rates. Or number two, you have to decrease the amount of time that you spend working on the project, which in essence increases your hourly rate for the work that you do. So let's briefly talk about some of the most common questions that I hear about straight up increasing your rates. First question I hear a lot is, when do I know I'm ready to start increasing my rates? And the answer to that one is, start today. Don't wait for next week, don't wait for next month. What are you waiting for? If increasing your rates is on your mind, it means that it's time to try it. That can feel a little bit weird, like you're not worthy, or you're not ready, or your work doesn't validate it, but how do you know unless you try? The next question I hear a lot is, how much do I increase my rates by? Do I go by $10 more than my hourly? Do I go $50 more? Should I just go $1,000 more and just hope that somebody pays that? There's a lot of different views and opinions on this question, but my suggestion is to raise it incrementally by $10 or $20 after every successfully completed project. Another question that I hear a lot, which is a really funny question, is how much do I increase it? Like how long do I continue to increase it before I stop? Who said you have to stop? The truth is, if people are willing to pay for your services at some sort of astronomical rate, good for you. My advice is always just to increase, increase, increase until people start saying no. Until you find the pain point of where people start doubting whether or not the value that you offer is worth the rate that you're sharing with them. Another question that people ask commonly is, do you raise your rates on only new clients or on existing clients, like recurring clientele? My suggestion is that it's always easier to raise your rates on new clients that aren't aware of the previous rates, right? So just introducing them to a new rate and the value that you bring, that's much easier. But you do eventually wanna raise your rates to your recurring clientele. Okay, so that's my advice for raising your rates and I think it's common advice that you'll get everywhere. But I do wanna be realistic and say that there are times when that's not always possible. Sometimes situations can be imperfect. Clients and timelines and budgets can can all be imperfect. And when the reality of that actually sets in, well, what do you do? So that leads us to the second way of increasing your rates, and that's not by asking for more money, but that's by outputting less time into the project. When it comes to lowering the amount of time you spend on a project, there's only real two kind of pathways to follow. Number one, become a ninja, become an expert. Be so fast and efficient and talented at that thing that you can just slam projects like that out like really, really fast. Or number two, find some sort of tool or resource or outsource that will help you speed up the process. I wanna bring this whole thing together with a true story that happened to me recently that I think kind of embodies the idea of less time spent increasing your value. I had an acquaintance recently come to me asking for a website for their business. They wanted it in two weeks, they had a $3,000 budget and it had to be running on WordPress and that is a huge red flag for me. I've done WordPress projects from start to finish, custom built and it takes at least 100 hours or more to do a project of that caliber and $3,000 in two weeks is just not gonna cut it. But this is somebody I know, somebody I respect, somebody I wanna help and I'm not gonna lie, three thousand dollars pretty sweet to have that in the bank so I went looking for a tool or a resource that would help me do the project without losing money I got to be honest I was really really skeptical because I think there's a lot of stuff out there like templates and I, uh, I just wanted to have still have a little bit more creative control and that's when I found Elementor 
Elementor is a WordPress website builder that allows you to not just kind of slap pre-composed pieces in and go like that, I guess that's it, or choose a template and then just change a few colors, but really modify it and enter in the content and the layout and do things the way that you want and have a lot more fine-tuned control without me having to dig in and root through the PHP and rework all the custom fields in WordPress. And so it was a good solution for me and I wanted to just take a few minutes and show you why I'm kind of digging Elementor right now because I feel like making WordPress sites for clients on you know, slim budgets and slim timelines is a real problem. It's a real thing that needs a solution. And I think I found the solution. Okay, so here we are on the WordPress dashboard. Nothing really special going on. It's a basic, fresh WordPress install. The only thing that's different is I have Elementor installed. Not gonna go into how to install it or what's all there because that's not the important part for this kind of video. The more important part is the fact that when you're usually setting up a WordPress site, this is kind of where you hit the friction, to be really honest. Do you install a theme? Do I have to go do a fresh design myself and then implement it in the PHP and get everything working in the loop of WordPress? Instead, what we could do is come into our pages as we've done, and you can see that I have a few pages set up. I have a few posts set up as well, nothing really fancy. But now that Elementor is installed, I have the ability to edit with Elementor. So I can press this one right here. So I'm just gonna click edit with Elementor. It's gonna bring up the Elementor editor. Okay, let's talk about how the Elementor editor works. It's really, really simple. I'm probably gonna be able to explain it to you in like two or three steps, 30 seconds flat. It's so simple, it's gonna blow your mind. When you are here inside of the editor and you roll over your design, everything you roll over will get blue bounding boxes around it. That signifies that that's a section or an editable element, something that you actually place there that you can dictate however you want it to be. And here's how you can do that. The X will allow you to delete it out of there if you want. The plus will allow you to add a new section, just a blank section to work with. Once you have a big blank element open like that, you can drag anything you want. Do you want a button here or a video? Sure, just drag it in. And you might be thinking, Oh, that feels kind of wonky. Do I have to like do some custom CSS to put the button where I want? What if I wanted two columns, Jesse? It's pretty easy. We can just delete the whole thing out and start it from scratch. And instead of dragging an element right in, you can click the plus button and create some structure first. Do you want a two column layout? Do you want a three column layout? Let's do a four column layout. And look at that, you have a four column layout. So that's how easy it is to add in structure and then drag in the elements that you want to work with. There's a video, there's a heading, there's a Google map, and now we're building kind of an atrocious layout here, but if you took a little more time and put a little forethought into it, it could be pretty awesome. So that's one way of doing it. Another great thing to do is hit the little edit icon, and any section that you hit an edit icon on, you're gonna get all the advanced aesthetic kind of controls for that section. So do I want to affect the layout or the structure? Do I want to kick over to style and change my background image? Change the position, fix it, make it animate? Do I want to add borders and typography changes and shape dividers? Do I want to get really advanced and jump over to this section where I can adjust the margins and the paddings and the Z indexes? I can even pop in custom CSS. You can do as little or as much with it as you want, but you have complete control in the end of how the design looks, which is awesome. So now that you know how the Elementor editor works, let me just show you top to bottom how I built this thing out and I'll just kind of summarize it for you. I feel like you're just gonna be amazed how simple this thing is. If I jump to the top of the screen, I click on this section. This is a nav menu, specifically a nav menu. If I go back to my widgets and just type in nav, you're gonna see there's a couple different types of navigation. There's a generic navigation that you can create that's not tied to anything, or you can tap in to the WordPress navigation that you've created. So I drug this WordPress WordPress navigation into that area and then I styled it. After that, I dropped in a nice big hero image. It was just a big one column structure layout and then inside of that, I would drop a few other things like an image for like my big like title lockup right here and a button. If you scroll down, you'll see I put in another section by pressing the plus icon and adding a little bit of structure and layout. I, I did a little bit of a two column layout here on this one and if I wanted to change it, I can actually come back into the layout 
out and maybe do I want it to be 50-50? I didn't want 50-50, I wanted a little bit more of that 33-66, that kind of two thirds layout, which I did really easily and just, it's easy to flop it around. I mean, I'm really good at front end development, I'm really good at CSS, this is just a lot easier, I'm gonna be honest. So that's really nice, I just popped that in, I dropped in a headline, a dividing line. After that, all I had to do is drag a video into this side and it allowed me to dictate where the source is, what the link is, and it immediately populated the video. So after that, I'm gonna scroll down, you can see I have a testimonial, and I was thinking about this, like how do I build this? Do I have to drop in like text and style the text and an avatar and style the avatar? And How am I gonna do that whole thing? I wonder if they have like a widget built in. So I just started writing testimonial, and sure enough, they do, they have testimonials. You just drag that thing in and you get all of these options. What's the content, what's the image, what's the size of it, Who, what's the name, right? Is there a link, do you wanna click on something? Next thing I did, if you scroll down, is I just created a new like section, just a standard single column layout, and inside of that, I drug something called an intersection. Intersections are one of your widgets right here, and if you drag one in, you'll see exactly what it is. It's literally just a new structured layout inside of your main container, and I just started you know, just styling it. Like, hey, what did I want in here? I wanted some, a headline and some text. And, and you know what's really cool was, I built this one, like, just like this, and then after I was done, I just, I just duplicated it. <laughs> I just duplicated it, and then there it was, and I just swapped the things around. And here, ready? Ready for the motion you have to do? Wow, that's simple, right? It's crazy. All right, you go down to the bottom. Again, another really simple, section that just is styled with a background image and a background overlay using my colors that I put into the kind of color palette section. All of this text is generated with my default uh, like typography that I selected. The colors pop into place super easy and I just dropped in this image of like a pricing chart and down at the bottom, same thing, here it is, new section and then I just, with two columns and then I just drug in some content and I drug in a working contact form. You can view the whole thing in the browser and you can see that as I shrink the browser up, I get like all my responsive stuff, like everything just works really, really nicely as you would hope that it does. And so that is Elementor in a nutshell. It's a little bit mind blowing. So previously I talked about the amount of time it would take me to do a WordPress site, probably about 100 hours or more, maybe 150 even, to get the process from start to finish and out the door. But let's just say 100, because I'm really bad at math and I like easy numbers. At 100 hours and $3,000 budget, I'm making $30 an hour. I was able to finish this project for this client and get the whole thing out the door in about 10 hours, which raised my hourly rate from $30 an hour to $300 an hour, which is absolutely insane. So for me, I think the big lesson is understanding that it's not always a square peg in a round hole, like trying to make things fit, trying to force people to pay you more. Sometimes people will, but sometimes they won't. And when those times come, do you always just wanna send work away? Or can you be a little bit resourceful and make the work happen? I think you can. And I think Elementor is a good example of how we can kind of bridge that gap. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and make lots of videos about design and development and business and product reviews just like this one, so maybe stick around. If you have any questions, make sure to leave those down below. I'll get back to them as soon as I can, and check the description for the link to Elementor as well as my tips and resources on increasing your rates. I hope you guys are having an awesome week designing amazing things, making amazing things, and being confident in the value that you bring to the table. I'll see you in the next one.